It's corny, but it's true. Your net work equals your net worth. And that is no more true than in real estate investing. The more people you know in the real estate investing space, the more deals you're gonna find and the more money you're gonna make. One of the biggest sources in finding free leads is real estate agents. Real estate agents are on the front line of the real estate market and the real estate investing space. They are inside houses all day, every day. So what you need to do if you want to find a great connection and increase your network therefore your net worth is you need to find more real estate agents so in this video I'm going to talk about where to find them what to say to them and how to grow your real estate agent network did you know that real estate agents used to be called curb stoners they would get up bright and early and set up a lemonade stand in the front yard of that house and try to attract people and that's how they got their listings there would be brawls in the front yard people would maybe spike the lemonade whatever it took to get the deal I'm glad that things are a lot simpler now with contracts. If you did not know that, hit the like button. Here are the three top benefits of dealing with real estate agents. Number one, obviously, is the deals. Most real estate agents buy and sell 10, 20 houses a year. Now, not all of them are gonna work for you as a real estate investor, but hopefully they're gonna come across two or three a year that will work for you. Some real estate agents spend a lot of time focused on real estate investor type houses, so those numbers may be even bigger for the right real estate agent. Just getting to know these agents and getting to know a few really good ones is an endless supply of free leads. We call it the gravy train around the office, but getting a handful of agents bringing you their distressed properties can be an endless supply of free leads for you. Number two, market knowledge. As I said earlier, real estate agents are on the forefront of the real estate market. They are in and out of houses every single day, and a lot of them have specific areas that they focus on, specific zip codes, specific subdivisions, whatever it is, they have intimate knowledge of the overall market and specifically certain parts of the market. So if you find a real estate agent that focuses in the same area that you wanna invest in, that's a match made in heaven. Number three, and maybe a little bit of a less obvious option would be they can mentor you a little bit because they're getting paid on every transaction they do with you. You're not paying them, it's getting paid out of the commission of the deal. So it's not coming out of your pocket, but they're getting paid to bring you leads and probably will mentor you a little bit along the way because they wanna make more money. The more houses that you're able to buy, the more money that they're gonna make. You don't want every single real estate agent you deal with mentoring you, but there's probably gonna be a couple you're gonna come across that would make great mentors. So definitely have that in the back of your mind. Bonus tip, good real estate agents have a lot of connections so they're going to have good contractors to work with they're probably going to know good financial bookkeepers you can lean on having a good real estate agent that has dealt with investors in the past and has a broad network will get you introduced to their network now that you've seen some of the benefits of having a real estate agent that you can work with directly how do you find these agents because you don't just want any old agent most agents are not good real estate investor agents you need to find those unicorns that are good to deal with and know the real estate investing market so here's how you find them. The first way is to look at recently distressed sales, either on the MLS or Zillow. You can easily find houses that are distressed that have sold recently. Now that might be overwhelming, so how you can kind of make that a little bit easier is look in your buy box. Whatever your buy box is, if it's a zip code, if it's a number of zip codes, if it's a county, whatever your buy box is, start to dig into that buy box and try to find recently sold houses that were distressed, and you're probably gonna see the same agent pop up every four houses or every six houses. You're gonna go back and look at the last three or four years and there's gonna be a ton of data to dig through, but you're gonna to start to see the same name or the same few names pop up over and over again. And then after that, you can just Google that person or look them up on Facebook or find them. Agents are very easily found once you know the right agent to look for. The second place you can look is again in recently sold houses, but recently rehabbed houses. A lot of agents will sell a house to a flipper with the agreement that they can list it on the back end after it's fixed up. So if you see a lot of these houses in your buy box that have recently been rehabbed, you can tell, it'll say that in the description, but you can also tell by looking at the pictures, a house has been recently rehabbed. Look again at the last two or three years worth of data and look for the same agent that keeps listing these updated houses it's likely that they are the one that found those houses. That's not always gonna be the case. Look them up and find them. I'm gonna tell you some questions to ask them here in a minute. 
The third way to find investor-friendly real estate agents is my favorite, and that's going to your local meetup. Real estate agents that go to your local meetups, they know that they're going there to deal with other real estate investors. So they are there specifically. They got in their car, they drove there, they spent that evening at that meetup to get to know real estate investors. Now they probably have a few investors they already work with, and that's okay. You don't need to be one of one. If you can just get in that first line of people that they send their deals to, that's great it's going to take you time you're going to have to get to know them a little bit but once you get in the inner circle of those real estate agents that go to those meetups and deal with investors all the time you're going to have a lot of leads coming across your desk that are really really good leads so now that you know the benefits and you know where to find them here are the questions that you can ask aside from are you an investor friendly real estate agent? because these people are paid on commission a lot of them are salesmen and saleswomen and they're going to say yes to that but that's usually not the case so here are some questions you can ask to dig in a little bit deeper and find out if they're a good fit for you. The first question I would ask is, do you invest personally? A lot of real estate agents sell houses, but do a little bit investing in the side. And obviously, if they're investing on the side and they're doing that as well as selling houses, they're gonna understand the market, they're gonna understand how to deal with investors, they're gonna understand where to find houses, they're just gonna have a lot better understanding of what you do. Because a lot of agents think they know what investors do, but if they don't invest themselves, they have no idea. The biggest experience they have with real estate investors is getting to know Chip and Joanna on HGTV. They don't really understand how it works in the real world. Once you start that conversation and they do invest, try to find out where they invest. It will let you know if they're an expert in the specific area you wanna invest in. It'll let you know if you're gonna be competing with them because they probably won't want that. But if they're a good real estate investor agent, they understand there's a lot of houses out there and they'll be happy to help. The next question you should ask is how many deals are they doing every single year? Specifically off market or as is type properties. Now a good agent is probably gonna have a mixture of both. It doesn't matter if somebody sells 40 houses a year and they're all market ready houses. That doesn't work for you. You need to find distressed off market properties. So get into how many off market or pocket listings this agent comes across a year and how many they sell. That'll give you a good idea at the volume and if it's worth your time or their time pursuing the relationship. The third thing that you want to talk to the real estate agent about is how they get their deals and who their connectors are. You don't need their connectors name. They're probably not going to give you the source of their deals. It's nice to know where their deals come from. Are they obituary leads? Are they probate leads? Are they coming from other contractors? Are they coming from wholesalers? Are they coming from hoarder houses? Just in general, what type of leads they generally come across because that will kind of allow you to package your offers the right way. If it's somebody that's living in the house you can maybe offer them a couple weeks after closing to allow them to get their stuff out just things like that you can customize your deals and approach the deals a specific way if you know the type of lead sources that they're coming from but some agents may not have a specific source and that's okay but it's at least a good question to ask i've talked about the benefits of finding agents i've showed you where to find them and what to say to them once you find them if you get a handful of agents bringing you deals you will have free leads for life hence free deals for life. It's a great place to be. It does take time. It's not gonna happen overnight. You spend the next six to 12 months trying to find agents. You'll go through 20, you'll find three or four that you really connect with, and you'll have three or four new friends. So it's a win-win for everybody. If you wanna know specifically how to get ready to buy rental properties, check out this series that I just recently made. There's the playlist above. It'll walk through step-by-step -step the five steps to be able to buy rental properties without using any of your own money. See you on the next one.